Where did all of our little leprechauns go? They were right here. Oh, here they are. Hello, where are the rest of the leprechauns? Oh, here they come. Hi, Theo, come on. Are you guys ready to read another book? Yes. Yes? Okay, here we go. This one, let me tell you what this one is called. This one is called Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato. Okay, here we go. Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato, an Irish Folktale by Tommy De Paola. Jamie O'Rourke was the laziest man in all of Ireland. He would do anything to avoid working, especially if it had to do with growing potatoes. Jamie O'Rourke, his wife Eileen would say, will have nothing to eat this winter if you don't go out and dig up the pratties. Oh, the saints preserve us, Jamie would whine. Me back's as sore as can be. Sure as I'm telling you, wife, you'll have to dig them up yourself. I'll break in two if I had so much get up out of this bed. So Eileen, who had done all the planting and watering and weeding anyhow, would go out to the tiny garden and dig up the smallest potatoes in Ireland. All because Jamie was too lazy to dig a larger garden and had no money to buy good potato seed. Then poor Eileen wrenched her back and was laid up in bed. St. Bridget and the Virgin Mary herself must have smiled on Eileen O'Rourke, the village woman said. Why, it's the first dress, she said, since she married Jamie O'Rourke. With Eileen in bed, Jamie began to worry. No Eileen to dig meant no praddies all winter, and no praddies meant no food. Oh, poor me, well, Jamie, I'll starve to death. I best go to church and confess to Father O'Malley. There's no telling how soon old death will be knocking on my door. So even though it was midnight, Jamie set out for the church. He was about halfway down the hill when he heard singing and a tap, tap, tapping sound. Oh, <gasps> sure, and then wouldn't I be known, Jamie whispered. But I swear it's a leprechaun. And sure enough, sitting in a circle of ferns in the moonlight was a leprechaun singing and hammering tiny nails into the heels of the fairy boots he was making. Jamie knew just what to do. He crept up and grabbed the little man by his coattails and held him firm. Let me go, let me go, the leprechaun shouted. Not on your life, Jamie said. Not until you show me where you keep your pot of gold. Now, everyone in Ireland knows that leprechauns make boots and dancing shoes for the fairies who pay for them with gold. And everyone knows that if you catch a leprechaun, he'll pay for his freedom with his pot of gold. But this leprechaun was cleverer than most. Oh, please, Mr. Mortalman, he pleaded. I'm just starting out to make my fairy shoes and I only have one or two pieces of gold in me pot. Won't you take a wish instead? Why? What would I wish for? Jamie asked. Me who's about to die of starvation because me wife's sick in bed and can't dig the pratties for the winter and they're such puny pratties anyhow. Well, said the leprechaun reaching into his pocket, you could wish for the biggest pratty in the world. It would last all winter and you wouldn't have to do anything more than plant the seed, water it and wait. That sounded wonderful to Jamie. Done, he shouted. And as the leprechaun dropped the seed into Jamie's hand, Jamie let go of his coattails and off that leprechaun scampered. Jamie let go of his coattails and off that leprechaun scampered. When Eileen heard what he had done, she was furious. Jamie O'Rourke, you're not only the laziest man in Ireland, but as fool as well. Giving up a pot of gold for a pratty seed? Well, I'm going to plant the seed and water it, and you'll see, Jamie said, and out he went. And faith, Eileen did see. In no time at all, the biggest, finest potato plant had sprouted out of the garden, followed by the potato itself. It was so big, it pushed up not only all the dirt in the garden, but the garden shed and the corner of the cottage as well. Well, surely now what's ready to dig? Jamie said proudly. He hoed all around it, but he couldn't dig that pratty out of the ground. He got a beam and a big rock and tried to pry it out. 
He pushed and he pushed, but it wouldn't budge. As he was pondering what to do, his neighbor passed by on his way to the village. He couldn't believe his eyes. He couldn't wait to tell everyone in the village what he'd seen. And before you knew it, the hill up to Jamie's was filled with villagers coming to see the big potato. Where did it come from? They asked. Jamie told them about the lucky night he caught the leprechaun and how smart he'd been. Why, anyone could have gotten a pot of gold, he bragged. But the biggest pratty in the world, well, that took some doing. However, did you outsmart a leprechaun? They all asked at once. Jamie hesitated and scratched his head. We'll help you dig up your pratty, Jamie, if you tell us how you did it. And they grabbed shovels and hoes and started to dig. They dug and they dug and they pushed and they shoved until the potato flew out of its hole. It rolled down the hill faster and faster until it reached the bottom where it bounced up high and came to a stop wedged between the stone walls on either side of the road. What to do now? That prati is so big that no one, no car, nothing can get by it. The constable complained to Father O'Malley. How's a body to get in or out of the village? What shall we do? The villagers wailed. Then they all looked at Jamie and said, It's your pratty, you'll have to move it out of our way. Well, Eileen spoke up, there's more than enough pratty for everyone. Why don't y'all take some? (gasps) So the villagers sawed and chopped and carted off huge pieces of potato while Jamie sat on the stone wall and watched. All winter long, everyone had potato to eat and eat and eat until no one wanted to see or hear a potato again. In the spring, Jamie said, I saved a potato eye for a seed and it's just about time to plant it. Oh, no, the villagers all cried. If you promise not to plant it, Jamie, we'll promise before St. Patrick and all the saints to see that you and Eileen always have plenty to cook and eat. We don't want another giant prati around here. Jamie smiled and agreed. What a perfect life for a lazy man. And so you see, darling Eileen, Jamie told her, I wasn't such a fool with that leprechaun after all. And Eileen had to admit that Jamie O'Rourke was right. The The end. end. Oh, I think that was my favorite book. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah. Well, friends, we're so glad you joined us today at Gona's Reading Ranch. And don't forget, what are they going to do? Subscribe and give us a big thumbs up. Bye-bye. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Welcome to Gona's Reading Ranch. Join us weekly for reading adventures around the farm. And don't forget, go to our website and subscribe to our channel. See you soon.